So you have an interview that was conducted recently by Tucker Carlson with a Palestinian priest, Father Isaac, who I like very much. I'm happy they talked about this because I've been trying to raise the issue of Christians in the Middle East for a long time. And I made a video just, what is it, you know, over a week ago for Easter. I made one during Christmas and in between, of course. And it's nice to see people like Tucker Carlson finally wake up and find their voice. But um, there are many like myself who've been, who've been talking about this for a long time. And uh, we're going to continue to do that now as well. So I thought we could pick some random parts and just watch together. And then I'll, of course, go into more detail about this uh, because it's a, a, a personal topic. So let, let us proceed and, um, and see how the Israelis treat Christians. Because remember that the Christians or so-called Christians in the United States, the evangelicals over, the, over there, they use them as a, um, you know, it, it's a voter base that they need in order to sustain uh, the money, the cash flow that goes to the Israelis. And it's, it's extraordinarily hypocritical, to say the least. Christians, Congress staff, or even pastors and influential pastors, is how little they know about the reality on the ground. And uh, their knowledge of the uh, situation here seems to be very, very shallow. Yet they hold very strong opinions. And oftentimes these opinions are shaped by uh, political party's position, uh, the United States position, and not really based on, uh, uh, you know, an, a learned uh, uh, opinion that's based on facts, on being here, visiting, talking, investigating, and uh, knowing the facts. Um, and to me, S simply put, Father, if I can, if I may interject, they don't know what they're talking about. Yes, <laughs> me, the problem with all of that is it comes across with very strong opinions and decisions that impact our lives. Uh, many times, I wish to tell not just the congressmen but the pastors themselves who support them. Do you know that your lobbying, your positions, even your sermons have direct consequences uh, on our lives? Uh, Tucker, in this war, there was pastors who openly called, for example, to turn Gaza into a parking lot. Now, let's remember, there are not just, you know, the many, many innocent people, the majority of, you know, Gaza people, civilians, innocent children, but also there are our siblings in Christ. Uh, we have relatives and friends in Gaza, and here you have a pastor with influence uh, calling for the total destruction of. Yeah, it's it's that that um, you know this is what Jesus said. If you go to chapter uh, whatever, it it says turn Gaza into a parking lot, right? It's it's really shocking. I mean, I'm 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 going to be much more colorful than the than um, Father Isaac because I these people really get on my nerves. They, they, um, they dress up and they go to church on Sunday and then Monday morning they're bombing Gaza. That's, that about sums it up, right? So they, they, they know nothing about Christianity. As a matter of fact, they are the number one killers of, of Christians. I mean, who, who else is, is dropping bombs um, on Christians in Syria, in Iraq? Uh, in Palestine. Besides, do, do you have to be a Christian to not get bombed or bombed? I mean, what, what is this criteria? But, but since these people like to call themselves that, you know, it, it's, worth, it's worth exploring, right? It's certainly worth exploring because you also have people in, um, in Congress like Ilhan Omar, you know, who calls herself a Muslim and pretends that she's oppressed because she's a Muslim woman. But she has given Israel billions of dollars. Yes? She gave them money in 2021 after they had bombed Gaza, two months after they bombed Gaza. A, a so-called Muslim woman. So yeah, we, ha we have to talk about these hypocrites. We have to talk about these hypocrites. Let me skip to another part, just so we can, you know, uh, skim through it. Some of it is theology. Some of it is the theology of Christian Zionism uh, that teaches, uh, for example, uh, that Christians must support Israel because the Bible teaches that. And... Uh, Oftentimes, that is part of a larger uh, theology of the end times in which they view the presence of uh, Jews in the land as preparing for the second coming of Christ. They see it as a fulfillment of prophecy, uh, not realizing, again, 
what that means on the ground, I always say it's as if the land was empty to them. Uh, they are excited about certain events without understanding the consequences of these events on real uh, lives. Uh, the irony is that many of these positions actually believe, uh, and many evangelical leaders believe that at the end times and after Jews are gathered in Palestine, two thirds of them will be massacred. Uh, and only for the other third to convert to Christianity and somehow they consider that uh, a Jewish friendly uh, theology. Yeah, right. You know, this, this is, if you don't want to get all the Jews in the world into Palestine and burn two thirds of them, then you're an anti-Semite, right? <laughs> That's very logical. And, and Jesus said this when, when he was preaching, he said, you should go and kill people. So I come back. Remember that? Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> I mean, have you ever heard of a bunch of BS? I mean, if Zionism is bad, Christian Zionism is like, is even more trippy and ridiculous, even bigger of a scam than Zionism, which is really saying something, which is really saying something because, you know, we all know what Zionism uh, is and how bad it is. So for, for something to be worse than that, it's really got to be bad. And I, yeah, I said it, Christian Zionism is, is right there because the, this, is, this is deranged. It's, it's deranged. I mean, do I, do I really have to sit here and like go, you know, explain this? It's deranged. And what a surprise that most people in the Middle East who, you know, Christians don't actually support this. It, go, and, go and find an Arab Christian in the Middle East who supports Christian Zionism or whatever they're calling it. And you'd be hard pressed to do so. I guarantee you. Who actually supports it. You'd be hard pressed. This is a Western thing. It's, it's a Western position. It's a, it's, a, it's a front. It's like the Crusades. You know, it's like, okay, we got to find some reason to actually go to this strategic place that sits right between Europe, Asia, and Africa, and has all these resources, and is so special because it's the, it's the cradle of civilization. Oh, yeah, it just, you know, it just so happens God told us to go there. What a, what a surprise, right? Here we are. <laughs> and then a thousand years, a thousand years later, oh, it just so happens that, you know, we got to bring all these Jews here and something, something Zionism. Yeah, yeah, we have to be here. Uh, how convenient. Um, don't get me wrong. I am for Christians and Jews, just like I'm for all religions coming together, understanding one another. But there is something very problematic when we make a certain religious group as an object in our theology and even uh, eschatology and relate to them uh, accordingly, again, without really understanding what is happening uh, on the ground. Uh, without understanding uh, even the complexity of Israel as a state, how secular it is, but even uh, how much uh, it is oppressing Palestinians, uh, breaking the international law, committing uh, sometimes you know human rights abusing documented against uh, Palestinians, including Palestinian uh, Christians. Um, to me, Christians should be for peace. And uh, again, uh, I wish you were investing all of this energy and money in initiatives that uh, bring peace, uh, not continuing to support Israel unconditionally without holding them. You, you want to see some, some, some Christians? I'll show you some Christians, some badass, some badass Arab Christians. Okay, here, let, let's take a look at, um, uh, at this video. I put them all I put them all together for you. Yeah? So you can you can see them all in one shot. So we can go to school together. This is published March 31st this year, okay? It was published on March 31st and here are a couple of Arab Christians. Okay, let's go through them one by one. Again, th these are not all necessarily Palestinian, but they're from the Levant and they they are a mix of Palestinian, uh Syrian, Lebanese. I mean, again, for, for me, there's no difference. It, it's the same thing. So, but, but I, I still wanted to um, tell you about that. Okay. So right there, we have, um, for example, Wadiya Haddad on, on the, in the top left. I mean, one of the most uh, uh, crucial Palestinian resistance fighters. Uh, from the PFLP, right? From the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. And he's a Christian. Okay, remember the PFLP? These are the, the ones who, who started hijacking planes. Okay? Not the only ones. They're not all... Remember, it's not... I'm not talking about, like, 
this group is, is only Christian. No, no, I'm just showing you how the Palestinian resistance throughout history has key figures who, who are also Christian. It, it's not, it's not a, um, which makes it secular in the end, if you, if, if you know what I mean, right? Because if you have both these groups working together and it's, it's a, it's a non, it, or it's an anti-colonial movement, the religion plays no part. But I still want to show you because of the uh, Christian Zionism to counter that nonsense that they spew in the West. So that's, that's um, what you had that on, on, the, on the top left. And then we have Hassan Kanafani, very famous writer, very famous poet. Do you know what happened to him? They murdered him and his niece in, in their car with a car bomb. It, like, I, like I told you, the Israelis have never changed. They are murdering, brutal, savage people. They murder babies, children, just like that. If it suits their political goals, they'll kill, uh, they'll kill another Jew even. And they have done this many times throughout their history. Before there was anything called Israel, if there was someone who was anti-Zionist, they go and shoot them in the head. There, there are actual cases of them doing this in Palestine. Right? They go up to you and just pop you in the head like that if you're anti-Zionist. So this is how they are. They have not changed. Then we have George Habash right here where my mouse is. Number three. Again, legendary uh, resistance fighter. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he conceded also that the PFLP and the PLO, they did it their way. And for one reason or another, they weren't able to, to um, it's not they didn't achieve anything, don't get me wrong, but he, 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 um, he, basically, he basically said that Hamas and Hezbollah and the groups that you have today, they seem to be doing something right. And he meant that in a positive way, right? So he's also, um, um, you know, from the, from the PFLP, a founding member, and I think he was originally a doctor. Right here on, on, the, on the far right, top, uh, top right, you have um, Bishop Capucci. So he was uh, Syrian and... He uh, got in all sorts of trouble and he gave weapons to the Palestinians, to the Palestinian resistance. He, tra he transported weapons for them and guns. And, uh, you know, the, the Israelis hated him and he died peacefully, I think, in, in, in Rome afterwards in the Vatican. So he's a Catholic. Um, and then down here you have bottom left Bishop uh, Atala. He's still alive. I'm going to play you a video in a second of him. Here it is. Listen to what he says. <laughs> الإبراهيمية الثلاث وهي المدينة التي تحتضن أهم مقدساتنا المسيحية والإسلامية الفلسطينيون المسيحيون والمسلمون في القدس يعانون من الاحتلال يعانون من قمعه وظلمه واستبداده وبطشه الاحتلال يعاملنا في القدس وكأننا ضيوف وكأننا غرباء في مدينتنا وهذا تجسيد لسياسة الأبرتايد الممارسة بحق أبناء شعبنا في القدس بشكل خاص وفي فلسطين بشكل عام ولكننا سنبقى في القدس مدافعين عن مقدساتنا وأوقافنا ورافضين لسياسات الاحتلال لن نستسلم سيبقى شعارنا دوما الحرية والكرامة لشعبنا الفلسطيني مقدساتنا ستبقى لنا القدس ستبقى لنا ونحن نرفض الإجراءات الاحتلالية ونرفض القرارات الأمريكية الجائرة والتي تأتي في سياق دعم السياسة الإسرائيلية الاحتلالية في مدينة القدس بعد أيام يحتفل المسيحيون في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها بعيد الميلاد وسوف تزدان شوارع وساحات المدن الأوروبية والعالمية بالأنوار والأشجار والزينات إلى آخره أنا أود أن أذكر المسيحيين في كل أرجاء العالم بأنه لا معنى لاحتفالكم بالعيد إذا لم تلتفتوا إلى فلسطين التي هي أرض الميلاد والأرض التي منها انطلقت الرسالة المسيحية إلى مشارق الأرض ومغاربها مغارة الميلاد في بيت لحم النور الحقيقي نور الميلاد سطع في بيت لحم وبالتالي نداؤنا نوجهه إلى كل الكنائس المسيحية شرقا وغربا بضرورة أن تدافع عن فلسطين عن أطفال فلسطين عن قضية فلسطين فليكن شعارنا في عيد الميلاد there you go. This is a direct message for all the, the Christian Zionists. So they get their heads screwed on straight, right? 
Um, again, going back to the, the photo, Daniel, I think it's Hamama, his name was, he was martyred in 2021. We have here Hanan Ashrawi. She's not into armed resistance, but she's a resistance fighter in the, in the figure, figurative and, and spiritual sense and in, the, um, and in her actions, of course, because not all resistance has to be armed. And, uh, you know, she's a very famous Palestinian politician and, and woman. And uh, we have here on the, on the bottom right, George Abdullah, who is in prison in France and who, as I told you a few weeks ago, he was denied parole, I think, nine, 10, 11 times, even though he, he served out most of, uh, well, he was, he was set, set to be released. So the sentence was declared served, but they wouldn't release him because Victoria Newland and Hillary Clinton picked up the phone. So this is, this is, these people in this photo that I put together, I put them there because they represent how people really feel, how, how Christians in the region, in Syria, in greater Syria, which includes Lebanon and Palestine, how they really feel about Zionism. And it's a loud and resounding no from them and from me and Anyone who says otherwise has no idea what they're talking about and should not be listened to. They are frauds, they are ignorant, they are liars, they have no idea, they have no dogs in the race or, 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 or dogs in the game. They, they don't know what it's like to actually uh, live under Israel's jackboot, right? So they have no skin in the game and they shouldn't be listened to. You have some, some Israelis, uh, some Zionists that I've... Um, that I, uh, I wanted to show you what they were writing because it, made me, it really made me laugh. They were, they were criticizing the interview that, that I showed you. And, uh, you know, the, the one between Father Isaac and Tucker Carlson. And I, and I just want to, to add some, some things because they, they really expose their bias so well. <laughs> one of them is from Breitbart, I believe. It's a series of tweets, and I don't want to go through the whole thing. We'll just go through, through it briefly. But um, you see here, for example, this one named Polak. And he, he basically tries to explain why Tucker Carlson and the, and the priests have no idea what they're talking about. But he does, right? He does. He starts going through this, this ridiculous um, logic where, where he explains that uh, Christians used to be a majority in Bethlehem, but now they're a minority. And he says it's because they've been Islamizing the, the city. Really? What does that mean? S since when do Arab Christians have a problem with Islam? They're, I, I don't understand this. Their neighbor is a Muslim, right? So, first of all, how is that a pro problem? Number two, Father Isaac is from Bethlehem. <laughs> the guy literally w lives works in Bethlehem, and you, you want to come here and act like you understand this issue better than him, an American Zionist Jew? What, what qualifies you to talk about Bethlehem? Number three, the reason that you have less and less Christians in Bethlehem is because they're leaving due to the Israelis, but he left that part out. He left that part out. You know, I can sit here and look up the documentary, and you can watch me look up the documentary of a woman in Bethlehem how they built wa a wall around her, you know, an ugly piece of crap, so the Israelis can snipe people from their towers. And, and you know, other Palestinian Christians from Bethlehem talking about how they left and they're sick of it and they can't take it under occupation. But he knows best, this American Zionist Jew. He, he knows how Christians feel, you know? It's because it's of the Muslims. Just blame the Muslims, as usual. <laughs> what a clown. And then the best thing at the bottom... Apologies for the typos. I'm on a flight to Israel. So he, he has all these points. He's got like 10, 10 different points. And then at the end, he says, I'm on a flight to Israel. Yeah, I figured. I figured you were. I figured you were. Remember also, Polak is, is um, I mean, it, it's obviously a, a Jewish name. You can tell it's an, a European Jewish name. Um, you, you also had uh, Pollard, which is different, that he was convicted of um, espionage because he was handing information uh, over to the Israelis from inside the U.S. And then they, they, I think he did about, he did like a 20, 30 year bid or something like that. But um, yeah, I mean, you got some guy 
from a right wing outlet who's an, an American Zionist Jew and he, he wants to speak for Arab Christians when he is the one oppressing them. He's the one oppressing them. He has the nerve to come and start correcting them. To hell, to hell with the Zionists. Screw them. Left, right, upside down. Screw them. I, I swear the lies, the amount of lies that comes out of their mouth, it's unbelievable. Like they, they, will, they will sit there and try to convince you that one plus one doesn't equal two, it equals 15. And if you say otherwise, you hate Jews. They will sit there and like stare at you in the face and actually try to convince you that you're insane. Here, let me show you how they spit. The Israelis walk past and now they tell you, well, it's just a part of society. Well, well, we don't want them. We don't want them. We don't want this small part of society that just so happens to have control over people's lives and spits at them. Unbelievable. Here, here they are. Look at them. You got Israeli settlers walking by. Every single one of them just spitting at the church. So I guess this is I'm not going to bother going and, and, and finding more videos for you because this one, uh, you know, I've already shown them to you. And uh, this is just the one I have with me right here. You've seen countless of these videos on the channel here with me during the live streams. So ha you, you can happily look them up for yourselves. There's actually so many, it's not, it's not even worth the time. Um, here you can see as well. Ultra-Orthodox Jews spit toward Christians carrying a cross in occupied East Jerusalem this week. An act of religious hatred igniting a scandal in Israel and beyond. Other videos also widely seen on social media show Jews spitting toward nuns outside a church. And yet another where Jews spit at a church doorway. Israeli police say they have arrested five people, one a minor, in the latest incident. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu condemned the spitting attacks. But religion He's condemning them because more and more people are paying attention. For, this, is, this has been going on for 75 years. You've got villages, entire villages that have been wiped out. That were Christian villages. And they, they, there was no need to do that. It, it, it's so greedy. It's like they're not even living in these places. And they turn them into parks. So, you know, you're, you, Palestinian Christians were kicked out of their homes. The Israelis bombed their homes. Bombed them. So there's nothing to go back to. Just like Gaza. And then they turned the bombed homes into a park for some Israeli settlement nearby. I, I, I showed you this documentary before. Uh, it, it's called, here, I'll pull it up on YouTube. I've put the link now in the description. It's called The Stones Cry Out. Okay, go watch it. Go watch it and you can see what, what, um, what treatment they get. So again, it's, it's important to underscore this because you have people in the United States, like, like uh, Tucker, who are only just waking up to this and it's good yes it's good i'm 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 glad that he um he covers this and that more people find their voice because it's it's frankly it's boring and tiring um having to explain this issue you know it's like does it even matter i mean it okay it, let, let's imagine for a second that everyone was a Muslim, so you can you would still kill them and take their their homes i mean it, it's like wh why are we even getting into this issue? But you have to do it, apparently, because it's, it's a big voter base that, that fuels this um, genocide. If you ask me, I don't think it matters to them. I think that the majority of Christian Zionists are selfish. Uh, they, they are ignorant. And even if you, you were to show them and educate them everything that I've just told you, they would still choose to go and bomb the Middle East because they're imperialist. So to me, this makes no difference. I mean, uh, you know, whether, whether they are educated or not, I don't give a crap. They, they are, as far as I am concerned, the enemy. Literally the enemy, not because I have a problem with them. They have a problem with Christians in the Middle East and with Muslims in the Middle East and everyone in the Middle East. They just want to kill them and take the land and build bases and take the oil and control it. It's just, it's never, it's never ending, right? You finish with France, you get Britain. You finish with Britain, you get the Americans. You finish with the Americans, you get the Israelis. It's never ending bullshit from these people. Never enough. There's not, not enough money in the world to satisfy them. There's not enough land or oil in the world to satisfy them. They're the enemy. They're killers. They're murderers. I'm sorry you have to uh, hear it this way. It's the truth. 
It's the truth. No one from Syria went to murder Americans and steal their resources and make fun of them and, you know, be racist. No one from Lebanon went to that and did that to the French. No one from Palestine went and did that to the British. No one. No one came from uh, Arabic countries and started killing Jews. No one did that ever in history. That's not a thing. It's it, it made up. Sorry, I have to be so direct. It has to be said because no one else will say it. No one else will say it to you like this. Not one person because they're afraid of, of you know, pissing off people. And, no, I, I don't care. Uh, you got people being bombed and now we're, we're starting to care about people's feelings because we don't want to hurt. No, this has to be said and it has to be said this way. Father Isaac maybe has more tact than myself. Or not tact, but shall we say he likes to put things more diplomatically. Well, I think the time for diplomacy is over. And... Uh, you know, just, just to add to that, for example, let's talk about pilgrimage. If, if um, you know, uh, let's say one of my cousins who is um, who's Syrian Christian and wants to go visit Jerusalem, okay, because it's a holy city and they want to see it as a Christian. They can't. Now, the, the Israelis will say that, oh my God, that's not true. It's, it's Syria that won't let you back in. Hey. I didn't talk about being let back into Syria because you have an Israeli visa on, on, on the passport. That's if you get one. I, I, I'm talking about, hypothetically, a Syrian who lives on Mars. They live on Mars. They want to go to Jerusalem and go back to Mars. Okay? You happy? They live on Mars. And this Syrian Christian wants to go to Jerusalem. Will the Israelis let them in? The answer is no, because you're Syrian. Goodbye. Happy? So that's it. It's that simple. Now, you have peop some people... You have some churches in the West, only in the West, that might be able to get some Syrian Christians in through a, a group trip or some kind of group pilgrimage. That's completely different. I'm talking about can a Syrian pick up and just go to Jerusalem and visit it like they used to for thousands of years? You know, like 100 years ago, you could just go to Jerusalem. You could take a train from Damascus to Jerusalem. You could ride on, on, on a camel. You could go in your car. You could take a bicycle. Whatever. You want to go to Jerusalem. That's it. That's your, that's your thing. You want to go on pilgrimage. You want to go have fun. I don't care. Can you do that? No, you can't. Muslim, Christian, doesn't matter. You're not coming. Bye. So that, that's another way that the Israelis oppress uh, people. And, that, and that's, that's besides the bombings, right? That's besides the support for Al-Qaeda. And all the other things that they've done. You remember these, the Israelis supported uh, uh, the invasion of Iraq. They supported the war on Syria. They helped Al-Qaeda. And then, of course, you had uh, a huge number of Christians for, in Iraq and Syria leave because they're, you know, you got Al-Qaeda on their doorstep and, and being paid, uh, paid, armed and trained by the West, by Israel. So that's another way that the Israelis, uh, they like to treat uh, Christians. Again, it's, not, it's, it's ironic because it's not, it's not particularly against Christians. What they really care about is, is killing everybody. They, they want to kill everybody. And you, for, for them, they will kill every single person in Syria if it means that they can take more land and steal the water in the Golan Heights without a headache, without being bothered that, oh, well, it's not really ours, and, oh, international law, and, oh, we don't like that, that Syria supports the resistance, oh, we don't like that they, they support Hamas, and they support all these people who want to take the fucking land back that we stole. Uh, it's not good for us. They will kill every single person. They don't care about their religion. It's not even about that. But I'm showing you how... No matter what, you know, demographic you pick, you'll find that Israel is screwing them. In Syria, in Lebanon, in Palestine, it's, it's, a, it's a giant screw you from the Zionists and from America and from Europe, right? Who, who, uh, who say never again, but they mean every day again, right? Every day again. Every day, genocide again. That's Europe's attitude. Every day.